So my intention here is to really drill down into fish safety and show you exactly what you should be doing from catching the fish, or actually prior to catching the fish, all the way through to that safe release. Now, the first thing I'll say you need to do is when you get to your swim, always, always, before you put your rods out, do various things around fish safety. So put up your landing net, make sure that's always up first of all, but also find a safe space close to the water where you can actually bring the fish into. Okay, so what I've done here is I've got everything here that I need to have set up. So I've set my landing net up. I've got my uh, quality unhooking mat, so nice thick unhooking mat. I've got my retainer sling put in here. I've got my weigh station. I've got a bucket of fresh water. I've got a pair of pinchers just in case I need to take the hook out with grips. Obviously, they normally come easily out, but just in case. And also, and I'll go into further detail, I've got my propolis and my antiseptic spray. And that's to treat any wounds in the mouth or it could be spore damage. Any, you know, I've always said to people, if we're gonna take the fish out of their environment, let's also give them a once over, a check over. You know, they will have some scales perhaps missing from spawning or something like that. So let's give them a bit of treatment before we pop them back in. It's, it's great to give back to nature. Now, one of the considerations, what you really want to think about is when you're setting up your unhooking mat and your, your weight and your photography area, think about almost the aesthetics of having a clear background behind you, whether it's trees or bushes. I see a lot of photographs taken where there's all kinds of stuff in the background. Just have a think about that just to remove it. And obviously shooting back across the water basically takes that out of consideration, but that's just a consideration for photographing. It's nothing to do with fish safety, but by being close to where you're gonna take the fish out of the swim is gonna be so much better. Such a small time to really move the fish from the water's edge onto this safe zone. Okay, so set up as close as possible. Now, one of the factors you really also need to consider, not that it's here today, is sunshine. And we actually do get it sometimes in the UK. Now, these unhooking mats become really hot in direct sunlight. So you've got a few things you can do. One, just keep it completely in the shade as possible. But what I just do is I just flip it over. So it's upside down. So once I've caught the fish, I'll flip it back over. And so the heat has been on the back. And then obviously I'll put it down with a load of fresh water to cool it down. Now, again, when you've got a bucket of water to cool it down, just make sure that you freshen up that bucket every now and again. If it's sat there for hours or days on end, it will become really hot itself. So again, just always thinking, make sure we're taking this delicate fish out of the water. We're going to put it on a mat. It needs to be wet or a retainer, I would suggest, and then over a mat. The mat and the retainer, everything needs to be wet. Water, they live in water. And it's also, again, that heat aspect. If your mat gets hot, you're going to burn those fish, which is obviously not the right thing to do. So what is fish care kit? Well we've worked very hard obviously having my own lakes I want to put everything back and do as much as possible. So there's two products I suggest you either have or you certainly have access to on the day. At Ashmansworthy Pools we actually supply these to the anglers. You've got to give them back at the end of the day but we do supply because we want you to be in the position of using the best equipment we can possibly give you. That's why Again, with biosecurity, everybody, Solar kindly sponsors all of my nets, slings, and hooking mats. So that's why you can't bring those to the fishery for biosecurity. And it's a lot nicer to have some good kit. You don't have to take it back with a stinky car. But going into the kind of a two pack system, it's very much, you can humanize. One of the few areas you, I think you can humanize is, is think about it, if you've got to cut yourself, okay? So you give it an antiseptic spray or some cream. Well, this is proper antiseptic spray de designed for carp, okay? So what you do is you spray the wound. So say it might be the mouth, it might be a scale missing, something on the flank, whatever. And then propolis. Now propolis is really interesting. It's going back to nature again. So what you've basically got is it's an ex extract from bees. And what it happens is they excrete it and they put it to fill in tiny holes in their nests. And what happens when the moisture hits it, it becomes a natural plaster. So first part, clean the wound, give it some antiseptic spray. Second part, use the propolis. Now propolis, a lot of people don't realize this, it has no medicinal properties other than being a plaster. So you don't just want to use it on its own because what could potentially happen is you're going to trap in some bacteria. So hence why, use the antiseptic spray, then use the propolis, and we'll show you shortly 
how to just literally put a bit of water over it, you'll see it discolor and it basically hardens off and it'll stick. So really good practice. You know, it's obviously, our, I think, I personally think it's our moral obligation to look after the fish when we bring them out of the water, whatever species, you can catch or release, let's do our best for those. So they're great products to have. The other thing to really think about is keep everything within arm's length. Don't have it spread all over. So I'll say, if you've prepped, before you've even put those rods out, you've got everything you know. It's almost like a process then. Every time you go fishing, it's exactly the same for wherever you go. Find that nice spot, think about all the considerations I've just mentioned, but also have everything in arm's length. Don't think about, oh, the propolis, I've left it in my bivy, so I'm gonna to have to leave, potentially leave the fish, which is a big no-no, to go and find something. So just keep everything within arm's length. Another consideration to make sure everything runs smoothly, because that's what you're really looking for, a smooth process. So you've caught the fish, you deal with it on the bank and you put the fish back. Obviously, if you don't want to take photographs, you can actually unhook it in the net and let it tiddle away quite happily. But it's only if you're going to take it out on the bank. Um, the other thing is obviously a lot of people want to know what the fish weighs, you know, for those memory catches. So a decent pair of scales is a must. You can either use a weigh bar like on this one, or you can use a tripod. What I would suggest is always make sure that you zero this well in advance. So a wet um, retainer, make sure you've zeroed it in, either using the station or handheld, but also make sure when you are weighing those fish, always, whether it's the station or handheld, weigh it over the unhooking mat, okay? The other thing is make sure the sides of the retainer are zipped up, okay? Because they will like here, like we can see here, as this is spread, over the mat, it is completely unzipped. So as soon as the fish is in there, you're gonna transport it, or you're gonna weigh it, make sure you're zipping those sides up. You do not want that fish to fall out of the sides. It's all, it's all about taking real time and thinking about it, and then it becomes like a, just a force of nature, riding a bike, you'll do it every time, and it'll be so smooth and so, you know, the process will always be as one. It will never change other than location. So I've safely landed my fish, had a great fight, really enjoyed everything. Now it's starting, this is where the business end starts. So you can see I've got my pincers here just in case I need to take the hook out, but obviously with quick change, etc., you can remove that hook really quickly. One thing to know, if it is difficult to take the hook out due to the location of the swim, conditions, etc., just also always being prepared just to snip it off. So you're just gonna take the fish then out of the water, still with the hook in the mouth, the rig in the mouth, but then you can deal with it safely on the mat. So it is important to really be in control. If you leave the hook in, you've got line, you've got rod everywhere, you can get in a right old mess. So do think about that. So the next stage is to break down your landing net. And whilst you're doing this, again, I've mentioned and I will mention the fins. Make sure that the fins are down the side of the body. Next thing is, always think of your own safety as well. Don't fall into that water. And now all I'm going to do is I'm going to roll my landing net down and create a pouch where the fish is sitting nicely into it. Then I'm going to lift up, and especially with a big fish, you want to support that weight. And because I'm so close now, it's just literally a step or two down onto the mat. So simple, so easy, just a fluid process. And then it's just a case of unrolling this net. All the time being aware that obviously that fish will be flapping, potentially flapping around. So a couple of things that I would really, really suggest is always be firm with the fish, gentle but firm. So on the mat, you don't want to let them flap all around. So just push those hands down just gently, just firmly, so the fish really can't move around too much. Another thing that I found works well is just put over the eye your hand. So your right hand, pressure on the fish just to keep it from not moving, and your left hand, I'm right left-handed, so your left hand on the, over the eye, and that does quieten the fish down. You do not want to try and do too much with the fish until it's quietened down. And one point of that is never bring the fish in too quickly. Always let that fish play it out. Enjoy the fight. Sometimes I have seen anglers bring the fish in too quickly. They're still really full of beans and they're jumping all over the place. And that's when it becomes particularly dangerous for the fish. So 
just control, keep that fish under control. So once you've got that control down, you're then gonna gently, carefully move the net out the way. As you will have noted, when I'm taking the net away, always pull it down the body. So you're going with the flow of the scales. Don't pull it against and go up the body. You're gonna come into contact with a gill plate, all those kind of things. Just gently take it away while still keeping in control of that fish. And as mentioned earlier, I do keep some pinchers, but obviously you're gonna unhook in the net. So you shouldn't need this when it's on the mat because you'll have unhooked the fish in the net. But the next stage is now, before you even think about weighing or photographs, just take some time to look over the fish. Make sure if you see any sores or if there's any mouth damage, just, as I say, spray on the antiseptic spray, then giving a liberal covering of the propolis and then just put some water over that propolis and you'll see and we'll show you shortly how it discolors and takes shape. So look both sides of the fish, turn it gently over, and I say, make sure this, you've got all the water to hand. Now, one thing I do see, and this is, well, there's two things I'm gonna mention now which you really, really need to understand. I believe there's a narrative out there that's totally wrong. When you see people putting water onto the fish, when they've got it in the retainer and on the mat, a lot of people push the water up the scales. You're forcing water into the gill plate. So it's actually forcing, in, it's a totally unnatural way for a fish to be. So you're forcing and potentially damaging, but also you're pushing water over the eyes in an unnatural manner. So when you put water down over the fish, always hold that hand over the gill plate and then pour the water going down towards the tail, not the other way. And whilst I'm on the note of retainer, retaining slings were done for one thing, to keep fish for a very short period of time whilst you might have to sort out or you might want to put the fish back in and rest it whilst you're taking photographs, things like that. But they'd be to be used for such short periods of times. I see anglers, too many anglers, too many influential anglers, basically putting out fish overnight, catching them two or three in the morning and leaving them in their retainers till the next day to get a nice daylight shot. That is so wrong. You've got a stressed fish in a stressed environment that it's just so cruel. And then you're taking the fish out. It's again, full of beans because it's rested up and you try and control some of these big fish that are being caught. So only ever use the retention sling for what it was designed to, just for short periods of time, for no longer. Anybody that says it's good to retain a fish for hours on end, I'm afraid, frankly, does not know what they're talking about. And I would suggest it's then a photograph at all costs. So just to be aware of those two very, very important points. So I've checked my fish, everything's good. Now the next stage is just to weigh. So I've kept complete control. I'm not moving around. I tell you what though, it is makes life a lot easier if there's somebody with you. So the next thing is, as I mentioned, make sure that you're gonna zip up the sides of that sling. There's no way the fish can get out then. Now, obviously, if you are gonna put the fish back in to give it a rest, which is never a bad thing if you're taking photographs, you know, just in and out, you know, you can do that so so swiftly because the water is so close. So then it's just a case of, again, I say, always keeping control. You're going to be lifting the fish up. And then when you're weighing that fish, always weigh it up over that unhooking mat. And gently pop it down. Now, if you're going to do some self-takes, or well, somebody's here to help you, this is the time to take your photographs. Now again, quick video clip nowadays is even better because you'll find you'll spend a lot less time just taking a small clip of film and then you can take some stills off it going forward. Now, I'm right-handed, so this, this is the best way I found to hold a fish for the photographs. It's a big problem for many people. I think fishing is very much, with these areas, very much like riding a bike. Because once you've learned it, and the only way you can do that is to catch lots of fish. But, um, and that will happen, and that will happen. So for me, because I'm right-handed, I will be in this position. So I've got my left knee on the floor, my right knee in this position. This will hold so much, so supportive of the fish. I see a lot of people holding fish like this. The weight, especially of a big fish, starts to pull them forward. Really does your back in. It's doing my back in just being like it now. 
but it also starts to pull you down. You see hands up around the front of the fish, covering all the fish. So you don't want to do that. What you want to do is again, gently, always gently, but firmly, you're going to put your hand underneath and around the anal fin. Then you're going to push this hand and it's actually not going to go all the way around the fish. It's going to be very supportive. And then you bring the fish up, holding it, not too high. And you'll have noticed that my right elbow will lock into that right knee. And that is taking so much. My back pain now is gone because I'm now supporting everything like this. So you can take the shots, you're in full control. If the fish does start to wiggle around a bit and you feel it, you know, it could potentially drop out of your hands, always go with it, always bring it down. Really go with that fish, always focus on protecting that fish. And the other thing is also, whenever it's on the mat or you're holding it, make sure those fins are aligned along the body. I sometimes see fish that are put onto the mat especially the pectoral fin will be pushed back. So it's almost like having your arm pushed back. So it's all about care, attention to detail. So there you go, you've taken your shot or you've taken your little clip of film, the fish is now ready to go back. And it is literally just a case of zipping up the sides, turning around safely into this area that you've got where it's so easy to put that fish back and then releasing. So the whole point of this film is to show you if you have all access to all of these products. You really think about it. Think about it before you actually go fishing, before you get those rods out. Because I've seen people, they dive in, they get their rods out, sometimes even forgetting to put the unhook, uh, the um, landing net up, and they've got no kind of control over the situation. They catch a fish very quickly, nothing's ready, it's chaos. Make it easy and also make it so it's mega safe for those fish. We, we are obliged to look after them. We're taking them out of their natural environment. So let's look after them. And I th say the thing to note is give back as well. You know, if you've caught it and there's some wound somewhere else on the body, you're actually now taking that fish out and you can treat that wound. So that's a really cool thing to do.